Well, tonight, President Donald Trump is now weighing in on the crash that killed a Colts player and Uber driver over the weekend. The president took to Twitter saying, so disgraceful that a person illegally in our country killed Colts linebacker Edwin Jackson. This is just one of many such preventable tragedies. We must get the Dems to get tough on the border and with illegal immigration fast. And that national attention is just one part of the story that's been developing throughout the day. Tonight, our Rich Van White has a close look at what we've learned about the suspect's history, as well as reaction to the immigration debate from local faith-based organizations. Rich. Andrea, ministers I talked to today minister to congregations that serve immigrant people. They serve the new Americans. They, see that these, they say that the president's tweets are a way of politicizing a crime, a tragedy, using it as a poster child to gain changes in immigration laws and policies. This accident didn't happen because he's undocumented. It happened because he was a drunk driver. And this is the main issue here. Instead of focusing on the actual issue, that we're making it an issue of um, an immigrant, death by an immigrant. This crash killed Colts linebacker Edwin Jackson and his Uber driver, Jeffrey Monroe. Police arrested 37-year-old Manuel Orego Savala. He claims he was extreme. They claim he was extremely drunk. The police investigation reveals Savala has used numerous names and that he's in the United States illegally, had been deported at least twice. Court documents list at least two different names. The Boone County and Marion County prosecutors are trying to figure out his real identity. In August, the Boone County prosecutor convicted an individual named Gonzalez of driving without a license. He thinks the two are the same person. At the same time, Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Ursay is paying for the funerals of both Jackson and Monroe. Zavala was in court this morning. The prosecutor was given extra time to file charges. He's expected back in court tomorrow morning to be charged with a variety of crimes, including driving while intoxicated and causing death. At 6 o'clock, we're going to hear from an anti-drunk driving advocate, what he thinks of these tweets, and also the family of Jeff Monroe and what the suspect's immigration problems mean to them. That coming up at 6. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. Rich Van Wyk reporting downtown tonight. Meanwhile, immigration officials do confirm the suspect has a long history with law enforcement. In fact, he entered the U.S. back in 2004 and spent time near Redwood City, California. Thirteen investigates confirmed with court records there that he was convicted of driving under the influence two times, both in 2005. And then in 2006, he was convicted of possession of a controlled substance two times. And in 2008, court records also show he was convicted of driving while suspended. President Trump said he would love to see the government shut down if lawmakers can't reach a deal on immigration. This comes as the president calls for action against MS-13 gangs, but his speech not mentioning the so-called dreamers. DACA protections are set to end on March 5th, but the administration says those obeying the law are not the priority. Well, tonight the House is considering another short-term budget fix, but it would only fund the government for another six weeks or so and must still be approved by the Senate before Thursday night.